can't remember my name, my little name. Come to me, say, your uncle, my dream, say, over a precipice. You know? hey, two foot, them cut off, be a blood around. But get me out of the street and get a wall out of the world. Brace me back against the wall. Put the gun to my head. My father didn't kill you. I was straight here too. They had to drop it out of freaking school. They told me that they were charged for robbery, kidnapping, illegal position of firearm. My name is Odin Thompson, and this is my story. Being disabled, it is not like say, it's a life sentence, as I would say, it's a life lesson. How old are you? I'm 32 years. How long have you been in a wheelchair? Approximately 13 years. February coming. So were you an active person before your accident? Yeah, man, very active man, industrious person. I praise the way. How many I say? Anything I'm put me on upon a goal. Mm -hmm. In the sense where I'm always moving, come, I never can find myself to my peers growing up. Mm -hmm. I always can find myself to bigger person like I can learn things from. So it's like. I a young protege from an early beginning, you see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So certain skills and things we have where, um, where eventually become, when I say integral, knowing I'm a sense of disability, I learn it before I'm disabled. Before. Oh, okay. What about sports? You usually play any sports? No. It's not a sports one. Sports a meal of a motor sports. So before your accident, right? What were your dreams and aspirations? I never have a specific goal or a specific dream. No. Because at that time, mm -hmm. we were young, and we are injured, we were young at the time, you know the sense. So we never really say have no great goals and no dreams. But at the time, growing up, we always have natural moral skills, we have leadership skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. In our peers, our peers look up to it. Me, they have be one of the head youth that were lead out. Mm. You understand what I say? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. my accident kind of shattered that part of it. Being a leader in a positive light, still. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because you can lead negative way, you can lead positive. But the positive side was mine. Socially, you look like an industry type of person, like love go out and you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, man, I was an industry youth, man. For the woman, them and friend them to see you on the party. Yeah, mm. now I want things as a teenager would I do. Yeah, so you miss that? Well, at times I miss it. But they really say miss it in the sense uh, right now, you're grown past a part there, you know, you become a man. You understand? A man where you know, say you are going to have a family to think about, and you have a health to think about to see you me. Oh, okay. You understand? Being disabled, it is not like, say, it's a life sentence, as I would say. You understand me, I say? Mm. It's a life lesson. What do you usually do for a living before you become wheelchair bound? Alright, I'm an electrician. I can string a horse and anything. I might not have a certificate, but work alongside like a, a professional, let's you know, say an apprentice. And you learn the trade? No, we learn the trade from school. Oh, you learn it from school? Okay. Yeah. How did the, the, the bike riding thing come around? Because we know it's had a bike accident because you have been in the wheelchair, but before we actually get into that accident, mm -hmm. all how that started, how you start riding the all bike? All right, from the bicycle days and going for the bicycle days, as I said, the man who made the wheel make a great invention, fascinated that something they call the wheel. That skill you upon the bicycle to see me go into all the Trinity, go upon a job experience over at TNR, I get a bike for ride that time. And love for the bike start grow. Graduate from the bicycle and start to ride the bike. So about what age was that? That was at the age 17. 
be a bigger man there. We have bike where from them know say you you are youth you're talented in the sense of now go hold the work as I tell you, for right. most bigger man. Right, right. You understand me? I say. So more time I live for the road, I'm not wanting to buy for wash off with that sale. See, kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you get a little practice and practice. Oh, okay. Yeah. So something where you fall in love with after a period of time? Yeah, man, love it, man. What was the day like going right, up to the accident? Right. On that day, take a taxi, go to Papin and collect my ear. Remember, I don't have a learner as yet, I don't have a thing there. For the boy up on the main street. So I take a taxi, go and collect it, come back home. So my brother and him was. I was making a gate, as my memory said me right. I was making a gate and I helped them well up the gate. Carry up back the welding plan. I come up here and hold a fresh and say, oh, man, go street, I know. My bigger brother have a son. And that day, after I carry up the welding plan, I had an ex youth named Shanai. I go back down on the road and say to me, yo, son get a date over the road over there, so come go and play it. It was like both. 4.30, about 3.30, 4 o'clock. When he left, 4th of February. And my memory served me right. I, I said to him, I said, I'm not playing a sound and I'm going to go and easy. Mm -hmm. He said, right, help me carry a sound go over the shop. I'm going to help him carry a sound go over the shop. Same time, my next bridge in the fall now with a bike. He said, I left me the road, jump on the bike back. Go up in front and I did that easy. They come down to dust down. And I say, I was so hard going down at the party. If no people are dead, I have more and more help. I swear I go on. So I walk and come down. See my right charge here now with the bike. I say, oh, give me a ride. I go down and I go down at the shop. I say, so I go on and come back. I step out of fight and I give me it. Before we even go no further, may I plead to the bikers them. May I beg on them, be careful upon the street. Wear your helmet. Wear the protective gear if you have to. Watch out for the pedestrians them upon the crossing. Watch out for the people them walking upon the sidewalk. The traffic will not weave through and all of these things. Not that he was doing all of that, you know. You know, but me just assess some of the idle riding business them, it can cost your life. It can also cost you your livelihood. So may I beg on them, please be careful. Protect on yourself. Protect the pedestrians them, the kids them where walk go to school. And last but not least, do not ride or drive under the influence. This is for the bikers then. Couple of meters after me pass and I come down. I remember the bike went over the precipice in a second speed. You understand? So, did the bike get out of control? Did it All right, the bike served to the other side of the road. Was it wet? It wasn't wet. So, when I see, when I car night, I see the bike I go over the next side, me step off fight. So, when time me step off fight now, the force of the bike dragged me over the precipice. So, when time me jump over the precipice, now I jump, sit down, tailbone. It was like on one couple of feet of uh, a retaining wall. So when I jump and feel like 
low limbs and just cut off instant. So I try to get up, I can't get up. So you never feel pain immediately? I don't feel any immediate pain, I just feel a like numbness from, from up here. So I go straight down to my toe, numb. I try to get up, I can't get up. I go down to the far down the ravine. I'm dead and I say, Father, I'm dead, I'm dead. Because I say, I'm not seeing nobody. But somebody was, somebody saw when the bike go over the gully. There was somebody over the other side of the road. And luckily, after I was there, like a few minutes after a bus was passing, we don't have a friend inside that bus. He actually looked down in the gully and he saw me. He stopped the bus and said, Yo, I did go on a gully, you know. Uh, that's my nickname, that's my street name. Yeah. And he stopped and shot a couple of other persons. And put, they taped me up, put me in the bus and carried me to the hospital. The Friday evening. But before the Friday evening? Before the Friday evening, like two or three days, somebody called my mother and she said to me, Say, oh, where's your son? And she said, Oh, he's in his room sleeping and she called me. And the person said, Oh, be careful. She that said, the that Wednesday she, before your accident? The Wednesday. Yeah, I'm a remember my nephew, my little nephew. Come to me, say, Oh, uncle. My dream is over a precipice. You know. like two foot them cut off, be a blood around. Two persons stand up over you. You see me? In the dream, I tell you, he was like about, about 13 or about 12 years old. He's so big at the time. When he come and tell me. Yeah? Yeah. So it's like they get the vision. They get a vision. Look at him, I never forget. Two person get it. And that's before your accident? Before the accident. How you feel when the doctor tell you, say, you're not going to be able to walk again? I was shattered. I look at my life and I say, oh, oh me, I'm going to save certain things. Oh, me, I'm going to, who are going to be there for me? You know? I started to reason with myself. I mean, I said to myself, say, well, if I hear this thing, I hear this thing, you know. But the inner force still I give me a drive to say, oh, push forward. I tell the Father God, say, oh, Father, you like, it not make sense me live. Yeah, man. It's like most I touch me on my shoulder and say to myself, well, I mean, I show you a few things. A terrain from where me live now, which is currently now, to the main, with a man like me with my injury, it will be ackling for reach up. So, I relocate to Portmore, spend like two months at Portmore. Based on that, during that time, I get registered with Surgeon Golden Rehabilitation Center, which is by the Moon area. And that day when I go to the Surgeon Golden, Rehabilitation center it give me a different look on life. Because previously, I tell you, say, Yo, certain thoughts are flashing and I bring home and I take care of myself. When I went there, that's the time it's like the master said to me, say, Yo, look what I go in front of you. You see? You're in a much more better spot than a man. You can lift up your hand. You see multiple persons in their lie down flat. Mm. Yeah? Can't lift up their hand, can't even move them head. You understand what I say? Yeah, yeah, well, on that yeah. day when I went there to get ready to start uh, for admission, I said I like one 30th person 
couple of persons going before me to Paralyzed as well? Paralyzed. Persons from all over Jamaica, persons from all over the world too. Got people from overseas come there. And I was like, Father God, I'm sorry, you know. Take back that. So that's where the sense of inner drive and the sense of confidence start build. Because you have to accept it. You have to build back so yourself. Come to acceptance. Come to acceptance. What is, it is what it is. You have kids, by the way? Yeah, I have kids. Older kids or younger kids? All right. I have kids that way. I'm not biologically their dad, but mm -hmm. I play a father figure role in their lives. Oh, okay. I have kids that were biologically mine. Oh, they are okay. just like four months old now. So how you be my mother? Accept the fact that you're in a wheelchair? Well, you see, in a sense where I would have to break it down but I live with some people that really understand. Love has no boundaries. Understand what I mean, I say? All right. How me meet my spouse? It was 2019. I got admitted again at the hospital. She works at the hospital mm -hmm. as a porter. That's where the union started. I'm the greatest support. Right. Yeah, man. You ever regret um, going on that bike? Well, and that particular if day. If I if I had that chance to, if I had the chance to change it, I wouldn't ride the bike that day. If but I you ever no. sit down and look at it and regret the day when you make the decision? Yes, there are times when you inner self reflect and to say if that that is the only obstacle that have shattered my life in a sense where if it wasn't for that I would have done I could have been doing greater things like I'm sitting in my chair now and doing great things you understand so what do you miss most from your life before the accident all right the, the sense of freedom sense of freedom yeah that's the biggest thing yeah that's the biggest thing you Very can just goodness. go wherever when you please yeah that's the only thing. Mm. You don't miss nothing else. I miss nothing else more <laughs> so. But no, this will be kind of a weird question for us, but mm. do you think what happened to you happened to you for the better or for the worse? It's a mixture. Isn't it? Of good and bad. For instance, say more and move about it from this so I mean can move it right now. I mean I need if you move now. You understand what I say? Mm -hmm. You say you see if I never make accident, me do that. Well, I have build up a sense of ignorance in myself where that energy there now got profitable. I want to me know for sure, you know. You see, life, it is flawed with all kind of unseen misfortunes. And not one of us is untouchable or invincible to any one of these unfortunate circumstances. We are all vulnerable to the flaws of life. Anyway, Odin is seeking a little assistance. And if you can help, please reach out to him. He's tagged in this video. Reach out to him in the comment as well. Just before you do that, Odin told me that he was building a house for him and his family. And I asked him to take me to the spot where he was building the house. And this was how he was transported by his brother to the location.
Right now, my day I may rep on my home. I have a steady income, but I have a business where it, it not really say a hundred percent in the sense to say oh, fully maintain my family, maintain me still. But at least I can contribute to something that, that in the sense I have a bigger man a fish or constant a bigger man for buy a pound of flour. I can actually buy that for myself. But the greater help I really need right now, I have to start my house. Me myself actually start dig out the level and them thing, gathering some material. But I need a strong support in a sense to say, oh, get some more material so I can get it finished. Or I can live comfortable with proper bathroom, kitchen facility. You know, and my kids them can comfortable to see me. Yeah. That are the only help I really differently need right now. I one wheelchair I have right now, I know it's a sturdy, but I still have to give thanks so much. But I think about the much more integral part right now, which is part of my house. Oh, okay. Yeah. That are the they thing. still can move you around? Yeah, man, they you? still can move me around, man. I may have my skill if it damage me, can repair it to myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, uh, you see the bike? Tell the youth, them say, here we're going. Wear a helmet, wear protective gear, and be much more cautious. Because first and foremost, you never see a bike in a hospital bed or a mag. If you see it crash tomorrow, it's either it end up in a scrapyard, or a man refurbish it and gone again. You, one life you have. You understand? And every man get the same chances. Me there you now can live and tell a tale of the pain and the agony we we'll go through and for stay sane and still there so we still can move on from the past we accept the future. You understand? And know say so here we're going. Life is what it is. When I cast life, I cast nothing.